As international moths have become faster and faster, aerodynamics have become more and more important. And what this actually means is all of the rigging that you used to see on top of the decks is now hidden below decks. Carl Stoneham here is going to give us a tour of what goes on underneath the deck of an international moth. So what I'm seeing here, Carl, you've got all of your control lines that then disappear inside the wing, pop out in the centre console, and there you've got a lot of lines and elastics. Could you explain what each one is? Yes, well, well first of all, the control lines run all the way back down here and all the take-ups are now underneath the deck and having the top fairing that is removable just gives really easy access to it. It means that the edge of the wings can be a lot thinner for aero purposes rather than where we traditionally used to run the take-ups along the wings. Um, if we start from the cleat at the back, this is a Cunningham, um, which has a turning point here and, and runs forward. We'll show you the front part of the system in a minute. Um, and there's the take-up for the Cunningham. So as you pull it on, there's a one to three take-up that takes up all the slack. And as you let it off, it helps the control line come off as well, which is really good. Um, we've got the Vang system here. Uh, that's a bit more traditional, runs on the outside. It just, it turns on these controls, but the take up for the Vang is very similar. Um, that just means you don't have any slop or any loose ropes on the deck. Um, have an adjustable outhaul system uh, with the purchase there. Um, the control for the gearing and the take up runs there. Um, and the same thing for the prodder, which you can adjust on the fly now. Um, this line here, is for my main sheet take up so that comes out of the deck and that just gives me um, a bit more main sheet in the roundups really when it's needed uh, and, and it saves it flapping around on on the deck now carl there's a lot of terms there that traditional sailors will understand cunningham vang outhaul gearing and prodder they are not in a conventional dinghy what do both of those do um well the gearing effectively changes the rate that the flap moves versus the wand. So it's a ratio, there's a wand going backwards and forwards, a rotation, and how much flap movement there is. It's a bit like in your car. If you're in first gear, you know, you have the wheels moving not that fast and the engine going very fast. And as you go up the gears, the wheels start to go faster for the amount of RPM. It's very similar to that. Excellent. Now let's take a look under this front section as well. So this is a front beam here which is why we've got a section at the back with a fairing and then a separate section at the front. The rear fairing you don't have to take off very often. Um, the front fairing you do have to take on and off every time you sail the boat. Um, the foil comes up through the bottom of the boat and then is secured there. So that's the main reason you need access. And then this is the bias adjuster and the linkage that connects the wand to the foil. Um, Mark, if you pull the, the gearing, known as G, you will see this is a gearing range, so the closer it is to the pivot point, the less movement you get at this end, and the closer it, the further it is from the pivot point, the more throw you get for the same amount of wand rotation. So that's effectively how the gearing works. Um, and you have a lot of range. Probably I'm using the middle third in the majority of the time, but it's good to have additional range when needed. So do you adjust the gearing according to the sea state or the wind state? Um, generally the sea state, but the wind, the amount of wind affects how fast the waves are coming at you. Um, so you're really trying to decide whether you want to follow the contour of the wave or you're trying to follow the profile of the wave. As in, you're trying to go with every wave or just fly an average height above everything. Um, when you're sailing a boat like a moth, having control systems that work well must be hugely important. If you're battling the boat as well as trying to sail it at top speed, things can go wrong quickly. Yeah, I mean, it's essential that everything works. The, the line's getting loose on the deck. You can get tangled very easily um, and it, it doesn't take much for it to go wrong and it, can, and it happens very quickly. And it's hard to recover as well from a tangle or the, the line going over the wing or whatever. So yeah, it's really important that all of this works. Then Carl, I'm looking at this little red line here that's wrapped around the carbon pole and you can adjust that here. What are these lines for? So this is what we call a bias adjuster. This, this 
effectively changes the length of the push rod from the wand to the foil. So by turning that, this winds in and out. Um, that affects the angle that the wand is operating at. So if you have that slacker, the wand is mean position is further back, and if you tighten it up, it goes further forward. And when would you be changing this? Generally, tack to tack. So the wand is offset to starboard so that it doesn't directly run in front of the foils to avoid the wake. Um, and because it's off to one side, when you're on starboard, effectively the, the wand is giving you more lift. And when you're on port, it's giving you less lift. So when you tack over onto port, you pull that to get the wand to go further forward to give you the same feel on both tacks. Now, Carl, I'm looking at your Vang system and you've got some pretty meaty Allen blocks on this and also a Cyclops load sensor I can see there. What kind of loads are you running? Um, well, the sensor is positioned where it's measuring half of the Vang load because um, there's a two to one purchase there. So it's picking up half of the load. Um, that gets up, you know, upwind roughly between 300 to 400 kilograms, depending on how hard to pull the Vang. Um, and about half of that for downwind. Um, th this meaty block here um, takes the full vang load and it has to rotate around the king post, which is this part here, um, as the boom goes in and out. So you, you want to overspec that block. And that's one of the Allen XHLs? That's an XHL40. And if you're saying you're running 300 to 400 kilos on the sensor, but that's half the load, so you're running 800 kilos on the Vang? Yes, yeah, it will be sat at around 800 and it, you know, you'll get spikes in certain manoeuvres, bearaways, um, and uh, often the highest loads are seen when things go wrong, if you crash. Um, and the, the boats are so robust, really, considering how lightweight and performance-based they are. So you've got an 11-foot boat, which is running, at times, up to a tonne of load on the Vang. Yes, exactly. <laughs> And looking at the Cunningham, you've got more Allen blocks, but two hooks. Why two? Our sails have two skins. So you have a, uh, either side of the sail, there's an attachment point um, with a loop and you just hook on. So there's a four to one purchase here. And then further back where we saw earlier, there's a six to one purchase, which makes 24 to one going to the Cunningham. Um, quite interestingly, the sails have become a lot stiffer in the last few years. So the Cunningham range is only 60 to 70 mil from full off to full on. Um, in the past, we used to have much stretchier material. So the sail would go up and down a lot further. Um, but the aim really is to keep the bottom of the sail sealed to the deck, even for takeoff and downwind, um, so that you just have a better performance out of the boat. I see even your main sheet rigs in with a take up underneath the deck. Could you describe that system and some of the blocks you've got in it? Yeah, well, running a full Allen fit out on the boat, um, we've got the auto ratchet 45 there, um, a high load 30 tie on block, a double 30 and another high load there that takes a sheet to your hand. I use um, the auto 45 ratchet because it's got, it's got two pulls in there, so there's two engagement points, which uh, just makes a block a lot more robust. Um, I tend to blow up a lot of the smaller blocks and if you have a much bigger block the distance that the main sheet goes or the boom goes off centre line becomes greater so it's important that you do want to be able to get the boom on centre which is another reason that I use a 30mm block there so that those can get quite close to each other. Obviously the, the longer your strop is in the middle the better mechanical advantage you have on the sheeting angle as well. If you, if you have a, again a big gap between the blocks um, the purchase mechanically is, is reduced. Um, and then this is one of the Allen through deck bushes that is really nice and smooth and allows the main sheet to pass through into a take up system there, which again are just the lower load Allen tie on blocks. Um, the take ups are all done with like the low load Allen plane blocks, which are really robust for that. And they're cheaper as well. So there's no real need to go uh, super expensive on those ones. Um, but the really high load systems like the Vang that we covered earlier and the Cunningham are all using the 20s and 30s of the high load stainless turning blocks. So when you're sailing, there isn't actually a single rope that is flailing with a tail out the back of the boat or anything, it's all taken up? 
Yeah, it's all taken up. Um, and one of the things that has become a little bit more difficult as a result of that is you can't see any of the systems. So if anything was to stop working or you need reference on where things are, you don't have that now, which is one of the reasons the load cell, the Cyclops load cell is so useful is because it can give you like a, a bang load at the time or a live bang load the whole time. So when you're trying to repeat settings, if it rains and you get your telltales wet or you've capsized just before the start, you, your rig, it's hard to get a, a good read on your rig. Um, just knowing some numbers that you can have as go-to settings really helps to just find the groove again. And how do you keep a track of the numbers from your Cyclops load centre? Uh, the heads-up display that we use at the moment is a Vicaros, the Atlas II, um, and this clips in to the deck fairing here. Um, and you can see the load changing as I pull it. I can pull a lot harder than that, but I just don't want to show off the video. And even your numbers are aero. Yeah, the numbers are really aero. Um, the sail does slightly cover it at times, um, but uh, you, know, you, can, you can glance and see. Um, and, and then we can download all the data as well. And there's um, an app called Vantage, which is really, really good for analyzing your, your days on the water. Um, and it downloads the data from the Vicaros and the load cell, and it will tell you your hill and your pitch and work out your VMG numbers. And it's a good way to sort of see when you were going well and what your settings were. And maybe if you weren't going so well, you can dig into what it was about the boat that you didn't quite have set up right, which is really useful and then allows you to improve. So you can go out sailing on your own and effectively tune, which is very difficult to do um, without this sort of information. Brilliant. Well, Carl, fantastic to take a look below decks and unbox your moth to see what happens on a modern system. Thanks for your time. Oh, you're welcome. I mean, there's a lot more time that I'm going to have to put the bearings back on now. So uh, <laughs> come and see me in an hour when I'm done. Good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you.